All right. So power line communication. So power line communication has been going on for a long time. Actually, um, the book I was reading, uh, which is right here, it said in 1800 something, you know, Mr. Whetstone discovered power line communication. He, so basically he discovered that he can send some signals over the electrical wires, which is kind of understood, uh, while sending the electrical power, you know. And so anyway, that didn't really happen much until 1950. In 1950, they started using it for street lighting. So you have the lighting and you want to control it remotely. Obviously the lighting means electric power is going to it. So how do you control it? They said, why don't we just send a bit over the wire and that will turn it on and bit over the wire will turn it off. So that kind of very low speed, 100 hertz signal, 100 hertz means 100 cycles per second signal over electrical wires they used. <coughs> And then 1990 X10. I don't know how many of you have heard of X10. Nobody has heard. Okay, so this is a different generation. Basically, in our generation, we used X10 devices. I remember when in in in, 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 in that time frame, 1990 time frame. Basically, if you wanted to remotely control anything in your home, you would buy an X10 device. So with X10 device, in next to your bed, you will have a controller and you press the button one and it will turn on the light in room one or press the button one it will turn off the light in room one so you could have controlled any device in your home using extend devices they were very cheap but that is basically using power lines you know power line means electrical wires in your home okay and then there are lots of these things you know, lawn works we already talked about and lots of proprietary stuff happened the most important thing that happened was home plug. It is called HP here, but you know that could be confusing, but I didn't have enough space to put the whole home plug either. So anyway, home plug and home plug started happening around 2000. And I did buy it then. Basically, it's very useful. Basically, when you want to have the internet connection from one room to another room in your house, you just buy two home plug devices, plug it on one this side and connect to the internet. The other side will get the internet signal over the electrical wire. So home plug is what we are going to talk about for the rest of this lecture today. And um, so the home plug has many different variations and we will talk about that. And there are standards like 1901 and 1905. Somehow 1905 got out of this picture. Um, so there's a 1901 and 1905. We will talk about them too. Okay. So before I go to home plug, there is another area called BPL, broadband over power line. And so the idea here was that, that anybody who has a wire to your home should be able to give you the access to the internet. Simple idea. So the phone company obviously can give you the access, but the power line company said we can do the same thing too. They have a wire to your home. And so, so the idea is they could offer a, something called quote DSL service. It is not DSL. The electric, the, 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 the signal, the internet signal comes to your home via the power line and somewhere you attach a router to the power port and there you have a signal. And um, there is a standard for it um, which allows that 1901. Actually, 1910 allows many other things, including this one. And the idea is that the normal electrical signal is 50 hertz in the in in Europe and 60 hertz in the United States. But anything over that, basically, you can use for internet or for any data communication. And so, it turns out that that BPL did not succeed in the United States. The reason it did not succeed in the United States, it's successful in Europe maybe, is because we have too many transformers and obviously the radio frequency does not go through the transformers. And um, so basically we have like one transformer per house. So next to my house there is a big pole and that there is a transformer from which the electricity comes to me. And uh, in Europe they have one transformer for 10 to 100 houses so they could go and fix 
they have to put a repeater around the transformer if they want to give me the internet and so that is very cost um, ineffective let's say in the United States to send a truck roll to get you a connection or just kill their profit whereas in other countries it doesn't particularly in many countries people live in apartments I mean you go to some countries there are high rises after high rises after high rises and you just get one transformer which connects to hundred maybe thousand in apartments there it is very economical but in the United States we don't live like that you know very few people live like that so so it is not economical okay. yeah so you go down to the power line if you see no sync is the signal the same as the power or do they like each have uh, their own frequency so each have their own frequency basically wire is same and they don't have to really send it from you know where the power generator is they could just connect to that wire right here you know in St. Louis some place where they have their internet office and then you will get it in your home the main thing is that right where the power comes in they will have a filter one will filter out 50 hertz or 60 hertz that is really 125 volt and the other will filter out everything over that that would be really one volt or one micro volt now don't take my number for that basically the idea is that's a very small voltage and very small watt actually it is like maximum one or two watts okay whereas this is kilowatts yeah. and that's like noise you know for the for the rest of the equipment so basically we do I mean if you want to call it frequency division multiplexing one frequency is used for internet one frequency set range and the other one is used for electricity. So it's kind of uh, modulation? Okay, so, or, hold on. Yes, it is, and it, yes, it is not. The reason is, you take that 50, kilohertz, 50 hertz signal, or 50, 60 hertz electrical signal, we don't modulate that. That is just as it comes as its goal. The rest of this stuff is all modulated. And we are going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, in a little bit detail. So, whenever you have any transmission whether it is over wire whether it is over the air it's all modulation right I mean basically you have this cycles and then you have to modulate either frequency phase or amplitude to send zeros and ones all right talking about the modulation the latest thing in modulation is called OFDM and this is again latest in the sense that 10 years ago 2000 Basically, this OFDM was discovered, well, it's not discovered before, but t 10 years ago it became so popular that everything that has been done in the last 10 years is based upon OFDM. If you get a DSL today, it is OFDM. If you get a Vimax today, it is OFDM. If you get LTE today, 4G, it is OFDM. Anything that you do, modulation is OFDM. Alright, so let me explain what is OFDM. OFDM stands for Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing. So I'm going to explain the word orthogonal in a minute. But the simple idea is that if you have a thick pipe, don't send the whole, whole information to the thick pipe. Divide it into little pipes. If you divide into little pipes, you have much better chance of making it there than sending the whole thing into one thick pipe. So here's what is a thick pipe. So suppose you have a 1 megahertz channel. And if you send it, let's say 1 bit per hertz or let's say 2 bits per hertz you will get 2 megabits the bits will be very very small tiny like this right and they will they may not make it but on the other hand you divide that into 10 channels of 100 kilohertz each now use the same modulation 2 bits per hertz now your bits will be 10 times bigger alright and they will make it particularly if there is a multipath Multipath means some signals are going this way, some signals are coming that way. And what multipath does is that these bits may slide into each other. Alright, the first bit may get drawn into the second bit because that the first bit came by this method, second bit also a copy of the first bit later on came by this method. So the multipath is especially taken care of by OFDM by this technique where the bits are really big. Because if the bits are really big, then even if they slide, let's say by one microsecond, they are still only covering 1% or 10% of the bit, 
as opposed to here, they will cover 100% of the bid. Make sense? So I'm making the bits bigger. That means reducing the number of hertz that we are using and the, 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 the band of the signal that we are using, we can do much better. So that is one thing. Second thing is frequency division multiplexing. So what we do is, <coughs> obviously we do the frequency division. We divide that one megahertz into 100 whatever number of slight small signals. So this is what is shown here. And then we put them such that they are orthogonal means whenever something is at the highest value, everything else is at zero. So by that method, if you just put them such that everything is orthogonal, they don't interfere much with each other. Okay. So that is OFDM, multipath. Okay. So basically what happens is, think about, I mean, actually a cartoon would be better, but basically multipath means that if I send through this one, one, one bit goes like this straight and one bit goes by reflection. So this has taken a longer path and therefore first bit will arrive and the second bit will arrive in the middle of it. Second copy will arrive in the middle of it, right? So there will be, you know, basically interference, right? This is called inter-symbol interference. So there is an overlap and the overlap is exactly equal to the difference in the time. If the bit is small, this will be totally gone because the overlap will be 100%. If let's say the bit is only one microsecond and the time difference is 10 microsecond. I mean things will be totally crazy, right? On the other hand, if the bit is 10 microsecond and the time difference is one microsecond, 10% of the bit will be gone. But 90% is still there. Right? So we can figure out whether it is a zero or a one. When you have a high channel bandwidth, the bits are very small. When you have a small channel bandwidth, the bits are very large. Right? I mean here you think. This is 10 megahertz, and if you get two bits per hertz, you get one two mega two megabits per second. You divide one by two megabits, you get the width of the bit, the width of the bit, right? Which is half microsecond. Here we have done the same thing, but now we have 100 kilohertz, and you get two bits per 100 kilohertz is two 200 kilobits you will get for each of these sub channels, and 200 kilobit is 1 upon 200 and you get, you know, 2 micro bit, two microseconds. So the bits have become bigger. Now we can take care of the only path effect, yeah. Alright, so everything today is OFDM. Um, I'm going to come to that. It, when you use 802.11, you want to use 802.16, when you use digital video broadcast, everywhere it is OFDM. Now, I, there's one line I wanted to explain here because generally, basically next semester I'm going to offer a course on wireless and the course, actually in that course we go into great detail about OFDM. Right now I just want to do one slide and then I have to explain all these words. I'm not going to really explain but basically there are so many modulations, BPSK, QPSK, 16QAM, 64QAM. For this course it is sufficient to say that how many bits they provide per hertz. So BPSK provides two bits per hertz. If you have one hertz of, band of, of signal, you can get two bits per second. QPSK gives you four. 16 QAM gives you eight. 64 QAM gives you 16. So given the same spectrum that you have to buy from the government, you can get a lot more, more bits through if you use those 64 QAM or now people use 4000 QAM, things like that. All right? But the larger QAM you use, the more, you know, you need equipment which is much more sensitive. So, so basically, another thing you do is that you, each, each carrier here is modulated differently. So this might be BPSK, this might be QPSK, this might be QPSK, you know, like 16 QAM. How? Basically where there is a noise. So you measure the noise. If there is a lot of noise, you use more conservative modulation. If there is not, 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 not too much noise, then you use very aggressive modulation. So you are very selective basically. Selective means for each frequency you decide what modulation you will use. 